again. So there's only one queen in the hive. She's the only one, she's the mother of all those bees. I'd lost one colony, but when I opened the hive, it's full of dead bees. Now, most people, when they say, I lost everything, there's nothing in the hive. So this means the bees died, but, but they left the hive and they didn't die in the hive. We need to consider that bees are environmental animals and everything that is out there can eventually affect them. No? So in certain places uh, there can be the weather that actually is um, making them weaker. In some places it, it can be, for instance, that the environment is really not optimal for them, for instance, because the, it is an agricultural area where a lot of uh, monoculture is used and then there are a lot, a lot of pesticides in the area, so, which actually <laughs> do not help a, a lot. Because the problem with these neonicotinoids, no, uh, this is the, the name of these uh, insecticides, is that they are uh, very, very toxic, so very, very efficient <laughs> in dealing with pests, but also with non-target um, insects. They are also extremely percent, uh, persistent in the, in the environment and they are hydrosoluble, so then eventually they can, um, they, they pose actually a big problem to aquatic, aquatic animals but because they, they end up in the water and then they get distributed all over. What the Commission adopted uh, a few days ago is actually a restriction, not a ban, on, on the use of three neonicotinoids in the EU for the next two years. It's indeed the uh, direct outcome of a report which came from the European Food Safety Agency in January, uh, which uh, said that there were some concerns and some risks for the, uh, the health of bees uh, when it comes to the use of those pesticides uh, for some crops in the EU. So the Commission launched uh, a discussion with, with the Member States which went through some procedures called the comitology procedure and in the end the decision came back to the Commission because the Member States failed to reach a common agreement uh, either in favour or against the, the measure. We're extremely disappointed about this, uh, this two-year suspension and there are three principal reasons for that. First of all there was nothing in the science that would indicate that this was necessary. Um, EFSA, the European Food Safety Authority, didn't look at all the, the data that was available and if they had, uh, I think they would have concluded that this uh, was not the risk that their rather theoretical uh, approach based on a lot of laboratory style studies indicated. That's the first uh, reason. Second um, is that uh, there's going to be an impact on agricultural productivity in Europe and at a time when we've seen productivity not increasing in the way that it is in other parts of the world so that's a real issue uh, and our customers face a real challenge for that. And then thirdly, uh, this suspension is not going to do anything to help bee populations. Um, it just won't save any bees. Like everything in life, every technology um, they have to be used properly and um, we put a lot of effort into that. And it's interesting to note that governments in Europe have been monitoring uh, the use of these products and have been, you know, been supporting the fact that they've had registrations up until now because they haven't caused any damage to bee populations. <laughs> 